Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Monday morning to you all. I hope you guys are doing great out there this morning and having a wonderful start to your day and a great beginning to your brand new work week out there so far. Hope you all had a great weekend. I'm here to bring you the latest on multiple things in this morning's video. The first thing we'll discuss is the tropics. We'll talk a little bit about Oscar and we'll just give you an update on if there's anything else to worry about out there as far as medium to long range uh, model guidance. Uh, we are nearing the end of hurricane season. Uh, but I don't think it's going to go quietly into the night. I think we're going to have one more burst of tropical activity. And uh, I'll speak a little bit on that when we get to that portion of the video. After that, we're going to talk about the pattern that we're dealing with right now and the pattern that we could deal with throughout the rest of October. But I am watching a storm system or at least a period of storminess uh, that could begin to enter the U.S., as we near the end of this month, maybe the beginning of November. So we're going to speak on that. And then, of course, I got you covered as far as what's going to happen weather-wise across the entire lower 48 for your Monday. If you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. If anybody has anything that I can pray about or pray over, please put it in the comments below. Let's get rocking and rolling this morning. So let's make sure this is going to work for us. As always, and it is, so we're good to go. So this is Oscar. Oscar is now a tropical storm. It actually made landfall as a hurricane into Cuba, the far eastern uh, sections of Cuba. Hope you guys are okay uh, this morning. Hopefully it did not do too much damage, but we are watching as this continues the weekend this morning, and we're not expecting this to really re-intensify, but it will eventually pull uh, just an all-out u-turn it's kind of already in the process of doing so right now this morning and then kind of head off into the southeastern portions of the bahamas and then we'll most likely just head on out to sea back out into the north atlantic now we have to watch bermuda which is right here this you know the leftovers of oscar could bring some unsettled weather for you folks but we're not expecting this Note, we are not expecting this to re-intensify into a hurricane or anything like that. But Oscar definitely was a surprise storm. Uh, quickly, you know, took a name, Oscar, and then quickly became a hurricane. Very compact, kind of tiny hurricane. Hurricane force winds only extended out of, like several miles away from the center. But uh, certainly, it seems like we have one or two of these a year. But this one definitely was one of those just surprise storm systems this big blob you're seeing over here is the leftovers of nadine it will try to develop um if it isn't already in the process of doing so this morning in the eastern pacific but of course we mainly focus on the atlantic side so this is what's going on currently in the tropics uh thankfully we're starting to end the uh near the end of hurricane season but we know weird stuff can happen in october and even early november ask the year 2020 it definitely will tell you that for sure so we continue to move forward here and just an update on oscar it's a 50 mile per hour tropical storm the center of the system is actually over land right now will emerge back off the coastline of cuba where it will maintain tropical storm status through tonight all the way into tomorrow you have tropical storm warnings up for areas of the bahamas right here the center of the track is trending a little bit further south so just tropical storm watches up for these sections right here of the bahamas but this will go right through this island right here and then head on out to see them by the time we get into the middle of the night tuesday night this should be heading on out to sea but we, like you said you know, like i said we, we got to watch bermuda out here this could bring some unsettled weather for bermuda but we're not expecting anything crazy or anything like that so as far as what's coming up is there anything else to watch out there in the tropics where well, there goes oscar heading on out what happens after oscar we start to get to the end of this work week we get into friday morning we got a little disturbance right here a little tropical wave but one thing i'm watching here is for a build up of a lot of tropical activity in the caribbean notice you're starting to see a lot of green down here that's just tropical moisture, shower and storm activity, some splotches of yellow, orange, and red. Um, and this is just a lot of energy getting getting its act together. And we've been I've been watching this for the last several days. It's right at the end of October, maybe the beginning of November. And a low does form right around Jamaica. Okay, you can see these um, lines right here beginning to circle up, which means the pressure is starting to lower. All right, we continue to move forward here, and we're getting you know past seven days out. This is like the eight to nine day range, so an unreliable um, a time frame for sure. But you know, we just watch to see if there's any agreement in model guidance. But it does just bring a lot of unsettled weather 
and to the greater Antilles, I mean Cuba, even a lot of tropical moisture up in the Bahamas. Um, you know, I've had you know a lot of people take cruises this time of the year. You know, this is getting towards the last few days of October. You could have a lot of unsettled weather, an all-out hurricane. I mean, we doubt it, uh, but you know, it, you just can't rule out anything. I mean, it technically is still hurricane season. But we start to get about ten days out. And we just have a lot of unsettled weather. In fact, it deepens a low pressure to sub 1,000 millibar here um, south of Cuba between Jamaica and Cuba. So we just got to watch down here. I want to watch this area. I mean, we're getting all the way into November 1st at this point. There could be one last two raw, if you will, with hurricane season. All right. If we take a look at the Euro, which only goes 10 days out, there goes Oscar heading on out. Once again, we watch the Caribbean to see if we have a buildup of moisture right here right down here um, we keep going we get into saturday we get into sunday we get into monday just a lot of green down here nothing really getting its act together no all out central low pressure and then we start to get into about the eight to nine day range there's a low popping off down here in the southern caribbean but then we get about 10 days out and i'm not seeing anything concrete there is a lot of moisture just on the northern side of the Greater Antilles and the Lesser Antilles and on the southern side in the Caribbean. But no all-out tropical system, but I would say the Euro typically underdoes this stuff in the longer range. So to answer your question, is there anything else we're watching in the Caribbean? Well, there's nothing we're really paying strictly attention to, but there is definitely an area I am watching, which is the Caribbean. Um, mostly uh, for the last few days of October, getting into the first couple days of November. I've been watching this time frame for a while. There's a favorable MJO uh, phase moving over the area, which means there's a favorable kind of area of rising air that will kind of move over this area right here. Combine that with the fact that, you know, we're still in hurricane season. We still have the warm waters, the Caribbean. I mean, the waters haven't really cooled down much down here in the Gulf of Mexico. They're beginning to cool down somewhat. Uh, we could definitely get some tropical activity, so we'll certainly continue uh, to watch that as it is still hurricane season technically. So now going forward here, I know we've went over this information if you've been tuning in the last few videos uh, multiple times, but we're going to continue to talk about this because I do think it's a it's a concerning topic. I keep I keep honking the horn at it on social media, and I think that. It's something that needs to be talked about a little bit more. So we'll speak on it here. Now, I, do, I don't have an updated drought monitor, uh, so we're going to wait to show you that again. Don't want to keep showing you guys old information. I think we'll have a new one that's issued tomorrow or either the next day, maybe today. But anyways, the 6 to 10 day temperature outlook, uh, the 26th through the 30th of this month. Man, if you're a cool weather fan this time of the year, which a lot of us are, I know I am, um, you're not going to be a fan of this. Chances of above average temperatures are pretty much certain in the middle of the country and i mean it's looking likely even in the eastern sections of the u.s and even the rockies we're starting to get near normal conditions it's starting to move into the pacific northwest with just an area of unsettled weather that is moving into this area of the country but man but basically between now and the end of the month the middle of the country is is going to be toasty for this time of the year now we back this off here and then we look at the precipitation for this time of the year I'm sorry, if not for, for this period coming up, October 26th through the 30th. All right, issued yesterday. We're starting to get above average precipitation chances creeping into the western U.S. and the, especially the Pacific Northwest. Drier than average uh, temperatures look likely in this area here, especially in this darker shade of brown. It looks like it's going to stay dry, and we need rain desperately in a lot of these areas. Some people are telling me they have not got rain since barrel in areas of Texas and uh, like Oklahoma and places like that. Um, you know, it's pretty wild, pretty wild stuff. Some people have not got rain since Debbie in the southeast because they did not get rain off Helene. So it is pretty wild. I mean, and I just feel like it's not getting talked about as much. But this is the 6 to 10 day precipitation outlook. We'll back this off here and we'll look at the 8 to 14 day outlooks here. So this takes us through the 28th, clear through the rest of the month, all the way into November 3rd. And my friends here in the Great Lakes region that are cooler weather fans are not going to like this too much. The chances of above average temperatures are, like I said, just pretty much certain up here. You could get some 80s. Pretty wild for early November. I wouldn't be surprised. You know, 
And just the chances of above average temperatures for the central and eastern U.S., I mean, are, are pretty high. How warm is that going to be? I mean, for the south, it's probably going to be in the 80s. Um, for other areas, the 70s. It just depends on what your average temperatures are for this time of the year. But check out the, the um, western U.S. Below average temperatures most likely will start to creep into the western U.S. It's just... What we're about to talk about, we're about to speak on it, an area of unsettled weather, some storminess will begin to enter the western half of the country. And this is when the weather can get back to unsettled. So, and the last thing we'll look at here as far as the Climate Prediction Center is the precipitation outlook. The good news is, once we get to the end of this month, which is in the next several days, all the way through the beginning portion of November, the chances of above average temperatures um, I'm sorry, above average precipitation begins to get reintroduced back into the picture. So it looks like we're going to start to get the chance for just some rain, maybe in some areas, some snow. I mean, we are getting close to November now. All right. But it still says below average precipitation chances being here across the eastern U.S. But I do think that'll change, too. So moving forward here, well, what's what's been, you know, limiting rain chances? Well, for the most part, I will say as far as from now, um, going back over the last several weeks, we've been getting these cold fronts, right? But they've been dry cold fronts. We're not getting any storm systems with them. And I'll be honest with you, if we were getting storm systems with them, um, it would probably be severe weather. So, you know, you just kind of take what you, you, you take the good and the bad or the bad with the good. But, you know, it's that time of the year with these dips in the jet stream that bring cold fronts. Um, have the shot and opportunity to bring severe weather with them too. So it's like, hey, you want to stay dry or do you want to get that rain but run that risk of that severe weather also? And you have to kind of take one of the one, e either one of them. I mean, sometimes you just get a good old, good old fashioned washout, especially the further north you get this time of the year. But yeah, and I will tell you, you know, the, the pattern going forward, and we're going to start this for Friday. Just a lot of zonal ridging. You know, we have this dip in the jet right here coming out of Canada. Could bring some unsettled weather up here for the northern section of the country. And this trough for the northeast, as we're getting into this weekend, has been trending a little bit deeper. This could bring a shot of cooler air for the northeast this week. And we are watching this kind of a just a, a trough that's digging down just enough uh, to prevent well above average temperatures for the northeast and if this digs enough this will I, I think it will just anyways but this will influence the temperatures down to the south too the southeast could get a little bit of cold air damming from something like this so could bring a period of cooler temperatures this week and we're watching this but especially for the northeast the northeast this could bring a storm system too but look at this tall ridge and this is the euro this tall ridge building across, I mean, the central U.S. and the Rockies. So all your weather is cruising way up here, and then it's coming all the way down here with a dip in the jet. So right here in the middle, you're not getting a whole lot of anything but above average precipitation. I'm sorry, above average uh, temperatures and below average um, precipitation. So we keep this going. How does the pattern change? Well, we keep this going right here. And we get this tall ridge that builds into the eastern U.S. to round off the final days of October. So, big time ridge over the um, eastern U.S. Terrible era. Let's get this, get this right here. And a big trough digging down out west. So, all your weather's doing like this and then shooting off like this. And you got embedded pieces of energy in, inside the trough. But your main storm systems is digging down with this dip in the, this dip in the jet stream. So... I'm watching for some sort of storm system, you know, especially in this area right here as we round off the last few days of October. Of course, this could start off over here, and as this trough begins to dig, the storminess begins to shift to the east, <clears throat> but you're definitely going to have to watch impulses of energy that shoot off the base of this trough and then eject across the middle of the country, especially with the ridge right here. And then you got the warm, moist air building around the ridge. You're probably going to have some sort of severe weather event that's going to, you know, have the possibility of introducing itself across the middle of the country for the last few days of October with a setup like this. Okay, this blue is going to bring below average um, temperatures with a cold front associated with it and above average precipitation. What is that precipitation going to be? We're just not quite sure. But this is going to bring 
most likely a warm last few days of October across the eastern U.S. You know, it's going to be warm for the trick-or-treaters out there most likely. You know, I think it'll definitely be different compared to maybe like October 31st last year where we had these crazy lake effect snow bands coming off the Great Lakes. If you remember that, it was pretty wild stuff. But there's a potential, and we just got to watch the evolution of this pattern. You know, as we get into the 30th, that the storminess could shift into the Great Lakes region. Um, very strong ridge over the eastern U.S., and then we start to get into the uh, the evening of the 30th, so this doesn't go all the way through the rest of the month. We got some sort of storm system right here, and this looks like it's starting to beat down this ridge. So do we have a pattern shift in the eastern U.S. for the last day or so into the eastern U.S.? I'm not quite sure. It looks like this pattern is still evolving, but definitely looks like storminess across the western U.S. at least. Um, but if we look at the GFS, kind of the same thing. Trough digs down this weekend, could cool you guys down temporarily, and then a ridge builds back over the area. And the same look off the GFS is what it's showing on the Euro. You got this trough digging down, okay, digging down across the western U.S. We got a ridge spiking across the eastern U.S., bringing um, above average temperatures, below average precipitation more than likely, and then below average temperatures here and... Um, above average precipitation your energy is going to shoot just like this all right but initially like i keep i gotta slow it down a little bit initially your energy as this trough's moving into um the western u.s your energy is going to go just like that and then that trough is going to continue to move the dip in the jet stream is going to get the right here and then your energy is going to do like that okay when i say trough just think of it as lower pressure the area in blue and then the ridge and the orange or salmon color, whatever you want to call it, that's a ridge. Okay. We talk a lot about that in the winter. But we keep on going here. This trough digs out west. Have to watch for uh, some winter storms, some severe weather events. But, you know, as we get into, you know, the last day of October here, I mean, that is definitely what we call a negative PNA. Um, which we'll talk more on that. I'm not going to get deep into that right now. We'll talk more on that in the winter, but this basically means when there's a big trough out west and a big ridge in the east, and then there's just a dividing line in the middle of the country, which tells me that we're going to have some storminess in the central and then western U.S. with a pattern like this as we round off this month. And we keep going here. How much does the pattern change after day 10? And we're not sure. But, you know, that's getting a little bit too far out. But we start, we, we are starting to get into the range of the last few days of October. And I'm really starting to see some sort of storminess setting up. Now, we're starting to get into this weekend. Here comes the first storm system moving into the Pacific Northwest. This will bring just mainly rain for the Pacific Northwest, some snow in the Cascades. But then the first little push of energy starts to scoot across the Rockies about a week from today. This could bring maybe a winter storm for the higher elevations, some unsettled weather across the Rockies, and just a lot of precipitation with cold air behind it. You can see the snow levels begin to drop as we're starting to see more blue than, than green. And this is starting to get to like next Tuesday morning, so getting pretty far out. But then we have another storm system that potentially moves in at day, um, day 10. So it looks like storminess begins to enter the picture. And if we take a look at the central U.S., with the same model, the Euro. Is there anything coming across this region? Well, we do have to watch, for example, this storm system. This could bring some unsubtle weather as we're starting to get about seven to eight days out across the um, north central U.S., the Midwest. Any cold air for snow? Probably not. Um, and then, of course, we got to get to this last frame here and check out the rain starting to show up over the middle of the country. We're getting, a, you know, like next Wednesday morning, like, like I said, eight to nine days from now. But it starts to show some unsettled weather across the central U.S. And check it out. This is the evening of the 30th. We're starting to get a lot of rain showing up. We need this. We need this rain. Let's hope that this actually happens. And if we look... We kind of back all this off and kind of look at the GFS. What is the GFS showing? And um, I'm going to have to back this way up here. GFS, same thing. You know, we get in this weekend, some storminess begins to enter the picture. And then as we're getting in about seven to eight days from now, there's a storm system across the west. Not much, but it's something. And then we start to get 
into uh, the day nine or day 10, like the last couple of days of October. And this shows a big storm system entering the Western US. And then we start to, you know, kind of get into an unreliable time frame. Um, so we'll just stop at day 10 here. But you know, you're looking at the middle of the country. We'll back it up a little bit. You know, it starts to show a little bit of rain across the middle of the country as we're getting to the last couple days of October. Um, nothing crazy. This could be in the form of some severe weather. Of course, it's not going to show thunderstorms this far out in the global models, but it's certainly something to watch, especially with pieces of energy ejecting off this trough out west. This is going to bring some warm, uh, moist air into this picture here. And we do have the shot of some severe weather. So we'll continue to watch that, guys. So that's an update on the pattern. We'll continue to move forward here. As far as what's happening right now, we have this cutoff low that continues to spin across uh, the central high plains. This is bringing some much needed rain across western Kansas, western Oklahoma, some rain across Nebraska. And we have another system entering the picture here in the Pacific Northwest, bringing some widespread rain uh, this morning. Um, across Washington, Oregon, northern Idaho, even extreme northern California. The eastern U.S., high and dry, a little bit of uh, onshore flow starting to move into Florida, a little bit of storm action. Watches, warnings, and advisories, just freeze watches. And uh, we do have some winter weather advisories to the Rockies of Colorado, some high wind watches. Um, Florida is pretty quiet. Everybody else is quiet, not a whole lot going on. Some scattered flood watches are up. Excessive rainfall below 5%, so it doesn't show up. And then the severe weather a risk for today is in the middle of the country from this cutoff low. Uh, we do have a level 1 out of 5 risk that runs from southern Nebraska all the way to the border of the Panhandle of Texas and western Oklahoma. Uh, level 1 out of 5 risk. 2% uh, risk of a tornado here within 25 miles in the given location. The wind threat, 5% risk. Hail threat, 5% risk. So not a big severe weather event, but something to watch out for, for sure. This morning, quiet across the southeast. Throughout the afternoon, we're going to get some scattered showers and storms that make their way into the east coast of Florida. Um, anywhere anywhere you could see it. I mean, anywhere from like Jacksonville all the way to Fort Lauderdale. I mean, maybe even Miami. This will continue throughout the evening. And then we'll probably do it again tomorrow. But the rest of the southeast continues to be extremely dry. And, um, yeah, no precipitation. Uh, day 24 at my house of no rain. Some people have gone even longer. So uh, the northeast, it's quiet weather this morning. Nothing really going on. Enjoy your nice day. We start to get into tonight. We get into tomorrow morning. And it's just a wonderful day. No, nothing expected. No... Um, no active weather whatsoever. The south central U.S. a little bit different. Texas is pretty quiet. We need rain in a lot of areas of Texas. Starting to get very dry again. Uh, but, you know, some strong to severe storms across central Kansas, western Oklahoma, southern sections of Nebraska. You're getting some activity here. And, uh, yeah. Um, Mary, wanted to say something to you in the middle of this video. Hey, you told me to reach out to you. Uh, definitely if you need anything hit me up um i think that um i think you reached out to me in the comments saying you want me to reach out with you i've tried to uh, answer your comments a couple times so just wanted to mention it in the middle of the video and i uh, reach out to you and tell you that i'm thinking about you um if you ever hear me if you're a new viewer if you ever hear me re i mentioned random um names um in the uh uh, in the daily forecast because we've had we have some very loyal viewers that's been with us for some time and supporters so i do that occasionally but anyways mary thinking about you hit me up i've hit you back in the comments a couple times i don't know if you're seeing it or not but anyways as far as the weather i'm going to zoom into kansas and areas of oklahoma and nebraska here in a second where we do have a chance of severe weather but everywhere else is pretty quiet um uh, just uh, we're going to get some of this energy to just try to get into Iowa and Missouri. We'll speak more on that here in a second. But a closer look at Kansas. Um, we're going to get some storms today. Definitely some strong to severe storms. Much needed rain, but this might be in the form of some storms. I don't think this is going to be a severe weather outbreak. But if you live in southern sections of Nebraska and then cent and western and central Kansas and even the panhandle and western sections of Oklahoma, some strong to severe storms. And yes, this could produce a spin up. Tornado outbreak? Absolutely not, but definitely watch out for these storms. If we look at the time frame of this, guys, this is this morning. This is getting into 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 
12, 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m. So definitely the storms will be making its way across central Kansas this afternoon and then southern sections of Nebraska. So just watch out for a quick spin up. And these storms will try to make it all the way into the eastern sections of these states too. Omaha, I mean, maybe even some more storms firing up back here in southern Nebraska. Uh, so definitely just be aware of these. Uh, they could pack a punch today, maybe a little bit of hail, gusty winds, and maybe a tornado risk. Up here in the north central U.S., uh, that spin will make its way into Nebraska. Like we mentioned, some unsettled weather in eastern Nebraska this evening. And then maybe some much needed rain tries to sneak into northern sections of Missouri and Iowa later tonight, like in the wee hours of the morning, and then waking up tomorrow morning. And uh, it's pretty quiet conditions here. Uh, not a whole lot going on. A little bit of shower activity for you folks in, in eastern Iowa, western Illinois. But outside of that, most of your big-time energy is missing the U.S. because the jet is uh, kind of buckled way far to the north, and uh, most of your action is to the north. The western U.S., um, let's actually... Well, no, this is fine. The western U.S., a little bit of lingering snow across the Rockies, but you see all the unsettled weather across the Pacific Northwest and the northern Rockies. This will continue throughout the day, the night, all the way into the overnight hours. A little bit of snow will try to fall in the higher elevations of the Rockies. And just a closer look at this, see the unsettled weather. Rounds of precipitation moving in. you got to get way up there in the Cascades to see snow from this. Um, but... Anyways, just some on and off showers. I think by the time we get into this evening, into the overnight hours, it'll be a lot less widespread in nature here, but definitely a soggy start to your work week. Temperatures warming on up all the way up into Quebec and Ontario, southern Ontario. I mean, it's going to be warmer in areas of the Great Lakes region than it is in areas of the deep south, southeast and mid-south. So it's warming up along the... Um, I-95 corridor from New York City to Boston. I mean, some areas might get into the 80s today. So the, the ridge is definitely influencing the pattern. This little cutoff low bringing its own little bit of cool air across the Rockies. It's cool across the Pacific Northwest, but nobody out west is overly hot or, or overly cold. I can tell you that right now. So that's all I got, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. God bless all y'all. Have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow morning.